Hi there, this is Evil Trout, and this screencast is about how to debug an Ember application. I said Ember application just now, but actually a lot of these techniques are going to work in other types of JavaScript applications because they're just about using the Chrome debugger. So the first thing I want you to do is go to the Chrome Web Store now and install the Ember Inspector. Uh, this is such a necessary tool if you're ever doing any kind of Ember JS development because it's just going to make your life a zillion times easier. So just go ahead and install that right now if you haven't, and then we'll continue on. So for this application, I created a bug tracker because I feel like if we're doing debugging, why not use like the classical example of a bug tracking application? So the source code for this is on um, GitHub and you can download it and get started right away. So I'm going to go over there. And here you can see how the application looks in a browser. So it's a bug tracker and it lists our kind of bugs and it lists their size and it lists whether they're dead or the last time you saw them. And if you click on one, say fly, it'll give you the expanded information. So this is a pretty simple uh, Ember application. If we go over to uh, the developer tools, you can see here, because we installed the Ember inspector, there's this Ember tab. And when I click on it, it actually gives us like a bunch of information about the, about the application that's running right now. So uh, what I'm trying to, the idea I'm trying to instill here is that you don't have to constantly change code and then save and then reload to debug an application. You can debug a JavaScript application just as it's running. So as I mouse over here, you can see in the tab that it's actually showing the views in the view hierarchy that make up the application. So this one down here looks pretty useful. It has bugs index. And if you look over here beside model, there's this little dollar sign E. And if you mouse over this thing, I think this feature is a little hidden, but it's so useful. It says send to console. When I click that, in the console here, I actually have the dollar sign E variable. And it, can, it, it allows me to look in and just like inspect all these little like cool bugs that are in the application. So you can see bad bug and name. Um, let's say I got the first one like this. That's a fly. I could say set name evil trout. And because of the bindings that make up the Ember application, it's just updated here in the console. So that's really cool. Like I've, without saving or reloading, I've just managed to change the state of my application and I've just peeked in here. Now I want to say something that might not be obvious, but you can use this Ember Inspector even on an application that's in production. You don't have to use any special debug settings or anything like that. It just it just works. So if you went to like Vine or a discourse forum right now, you can just inspect how they work, and you can peek through them and see like how they've laid out their views and stuff like that. And I think that's really awesome. Let's look at the Elements pane here. And if you've ever done debugging in Chrome, you've probably seen this uh, this pane before in the Developer Tools. But you can actually look through the the DOM here, and you can see how things are laid out. And one really cool thing about this is, let, let's say I click on this H1 here, there's a hidden variable that Chrome has made available in the console here called $0. And if I, if I type that in, you can see I actually have a reference to that last thing that I clicked on. If I click on this table here, and then do $0, it's the same thing. But now the header has become $1. So what it actually does is keep track of the history of the last elements that you set. And of course, just like I showed you with bindings, you can actually mess around with the, the DOM markup. So if I say, you know, inner HTML and I say title in the browser here, that's just, uh, that's just updated. So that's super cool. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this though, because Ember doesn't really like it when you mess with the DOM because it has all these like metamorphs and stuff like that. So I just refresh the page if you end up messing with things like that. So the next thing I want to show you is this Sources tab right here. If you click here, you can see you get a little bit of a tree view of what your application is. But the really cool thing here is that you can hit Command-O, and I think it's Control-O on other operating systems, and you can see all the files that you're using. So if I type like index um, in there, it's kind of like a type ahead, and I can see the code that my controller is using right here. Now you might have noticed by looking at this page here that there's actually a bug here in our bug tracker. If you look at the average number here, this, this is way out of whack with the sizes of the bugs that we're seeing here, like 8, 5, 10, 9. The, the average is shouldn't be in the 3,000 range. So let's try and figure out what's going on here. So this is actually the controller here that I've opened, and you can see the average size method. And this actually looks like pretty reasonable if you're looking at the code. It says, you know, total is zero, gets the bugs from the model, it loops through each bug, and for each bug it adds the total to the size, and then it returns a rounded total divided by the length. This seems pretty sane, but obviously something is, is going on wrong here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a breakpoint. And a breakpoint is something that tells the JavaScript interpreter to stop running when it reaches this point, and it lets us step through the code. So I'm going to insert one right here, just by clicking on the line number. Now, 
you could just reload the page and then see this in effect right away. You could see it's paused in the debugger. But another thing you could do, because it's an Ember application, is just navigate around. Um, you don't have to fully reload everything all the time. You can just make it happen as you click. So here you can see that it's paused in the debugger in our browser. And then in here, you can see that you, the exact line that we're on. You see the call stack here, so how deep into the application we are. But the really interesting thing here is that I can just type like variables in the console, like total, and it shows me the current value of total. If I type bugs, well, that's undefined because this the line it's actually paused on is the one that's actually creating this variable. So if you look up here in the corner here, there's these little um, navigation things for your breakpoint. So you can step over the next function call, you can step into the next function call, and you can actually step out of the current function. And then there's this like pause resume script thing. So if we just wanted to say, you know, go ahead, you can click this. So I'm actually going to step into the next, uh, well, I'll step over it. Uh, and then we'll see we're on the next line here. And now I can type bugs, and you can see that I actually have access to that array. So this is this is really cool. Uh, if I if I skip uh, into this one, you can see that we're in the loop here, and then we can check the total, and it's zero. And then if I say, you know, let's uh, let's step, yeah, let's step uh, over again, and then we should be back in the array. We can check total again. So it's eight after the first one. And then it's 13. So you can see that this is working. And then all of a sudden, we can see, oh, wow, it's 1310. So something really weird just happened there. So let's take a look at the current value of B. We can see that it's a tick. And its size is 9, so that's kind of weird. So I think what's actually happened here is that the previous value in the loop before 1310 had a value of a string for the size. If you've ever done. If you've done a lot of JavaScript programming before, you might have noticed this. JavaScript uh, has dynamic types. So if you do something like 9 plus 1 plus 10, you're going to get 20. But if you do 9 plus a string of 1 plus 10, you're going to get something totally different. Because the first time you enter a string into the application, uh, it's going to assume that everything you're doing is appending from that point on, even though it's actually numbers and that's not what you wanted. So it looks like that's the kind of bug we have right here. So I'm actually going to resume. Uh, execution and we can see here so we knew at the 9 it was okay we knew before that it was okay so I have a strong suspicion that it was the 10. Um, now I wonder is there any way that we could uh, output these as we go along? If you've ever done JavaScript development you've probably used the concept of a console.log and console.log is some code you can insert in your application you can say just any string you could also add variables like you know one two three with a comma and then you can see you can just inspect them and all that stuff so I wonder, is there a way in our running application that we could insert console.logs without entering, editing the source? And it turns out you can. This is a really cool thing. If I right click on a line, I can add a conditional breakpoint. So normally, when, I, when you add a breakpoint by just clicking on a line, that tells the uh, interpreter to just stop there every time. But you can also add it in the, in the event that something changes. So one awesome trick you can do here is you can insert a console.log inside a conditional breakpoint. Now, a console.log doesn't ever return true. It, it's, you know, it's just a logger. It returns, uh, it returns a string, or I actually think it returns. It looks like it returns undefined here. So this will actually never match the condition. But if we do that, you can see we get a little different style breakpoint here. So if I refresh the page, you can now see that it's actually outputting all these, all these bugs. Uh, so that's great. If you want to like just like you don't the goal is to not always have to edit files and save them and reload the goal is to just you know use the debugger to inspect the application as it's running so you know we suspected that one of these was a string and we don't know which one it is um, so let's let's go in here and let's just change this uh, breakpoint a little bit more by saying b dot get size and we refresh the page they actually look okay here because JavaScript is always calling to string on it. So we don't, we're not totally sure which one it is. So if I go back, I'm going to say edit. And I'm going to say edit breakpoint. And I'm going to say um, json.stringify. So this is a method that's built into JavaScript that you can use to uh, kind of output a piece of data as if it was going to be serialized to JSON. And the reason I'm doing this is because once I've done that and then refresh the page, you can see here that it's it has to surround strings by quotes. And we can see here that our third bug 
in case the mosquito, as we suspected, is actually the string of 10 and not the value of 10. So the solution, of course, would be to, to fix that and make sure in our application, or I guess it's our database layer, that it's not returned as the incorrect thing. So another thing I wanted to show is how you can get access to a variable uh, based on a console.log. So if, if you are saving code on the in your editor and stuff like that and then refreshing in a browser, you'll often just console.log things like the current bug. So I'm going to add another conditional breakpoint here and I'm just going to console.log the current bug and refresh the page. So anytime you actually console.log something in the Chrome inspector, you can right click on it and it has this cool thing where it says store as global variable. And when you click that, you see it's created temp1. And then you can just work with that. Um, we're not, knows we're not paused or anything like that. And, like, and I have access to the bug and I can say, you know, temp1.set name hello. And then it's just, it's totally worked. So that's a great technique if you ever need to like, you know, peek into data and see how things are working. So this is just a peek of a few of the features that you can use using the Ember Inspector and the Chrome Developer Tools. There's a lot more to this. I actually suggest that you start small, use a couple of techniques I just showed you and work up and try to develop more and more later. Uh, your goal should be to debug as much as you can without saving and reloading. Like get out of that phase of just save, reload, save, reload, save, reload. Just peek through, step through, change things, add console logs, add breakpoints. See if you can figure out your bug that way because I think you'll be a lot more productive as a developer.